How's it going guys? Fives back for Delinquent Velociraptor Media and today it is time for more Pokemon. Uh, but we're going to start out a little differently. Look at this lovely website. This is the website for the Puckle Podcast, Pokemon Underground Champions League. Uh, they are a sort of general Pokemon podcast. They've been putting up episodes since like 2007, which is insane. Um, I discovered them, I don't know, like a month or two ago. And they do general Pokemon stuff. They also do TCG stuff. Definitely go Definitely. check them out. Um, Game Corner is Game Corner is very funny. They just do kind of random Pokemon trivia games. I guess it's a good time. Uh, they have a bunch of different podcasts, articles, stuff like that. Another thing they've started doing: TCG tournament. So this is a standard tournament. It started this past Monday. No, Java update, go away. Um, so yeah, I decided to enter. It was free. Uh, there is prize support, which is awesome. And uh, standard tournament, I reached out and got a hold of... Uh, his name is Jushiro. Uh, he runs the TCG cast. He's the host of the TCG cast. Got his permission to record my games. Uh, got permission from my first round opponent. So... Assuming I get permission from each opponent, uh, at least for all five rounds of the Swiss, I uh, will be bringing that to you guys. Uh, tournament organizer is Gator. Uh, I'm excited about this. I've never done a Pokemon tournament before, except for the weird event tournaments they have on TCGO. So I started digging through standard decks, trying to figure out what I wanted to play, looked at like seven or eight different things, uh, talked over some stuff with Netstrider, and... I narrowed it down to three things. Solgaleo, Metagross, Sylveon, and just straight Metagross, which I didn't even realize it was a thing until like a week and a half ago. Um, but I've seen people like Yellow Swallow, Pokemon Evolutionaries, groups like that do videos on it, so I figured I'd check it out. Um, so, after much debate, I went the pure Metagross route. Um, so yeah, we're going to dive into the deck, and then you're going to see... Uh, the first, uh, all the rounds, not just the first round, are best of three. So you're actually going to see some games against uh, my first round opponent. Uh, those will be post commentated because I was able to record uh, at the time we scheduled to play, but I wasn't able to actually do commentary while I was recording. So those will be post commentated, but should still work out okay, I think. So let's jump straight in to look at the deck. So this is this is Metagross GX. Stage 2, 250 HP, which is great. Weakness to Fire, which is not the best in the world because Volcanion is very popular. Resistant to Psychic, which is great because that means it takes less damage from Garbodor, or Garbodor which is awesome. Uh, so Metagross does three things. Geotech System, uh, as an ability, once during your turn, before you attack, you may attach a Psychic or Steel Energy from your discard pile to your active Pokemon. So if you have two or three of these on your bench and, and anything in the active, you can power up most things if they use steel or psychic energy. Sorry, metal or psychic energy. Um, which is great. Uh, Geotech Systems is a lot better than I thought it was originally. Even if you retreat out for its full three retreat cost, you can just power up whatever's in the active next if you have enough Metagross out. It's great. Uh, it's only attack, uh, damaging attack at least, Giga Hammer, uh, two metal and a colorless for 150. It can't use Giga Hammer during your next turn. We do have some ways around that, so it's not too bad. Um, the damage could be a little higher, but we do play some things to boost it. Uh, and then it's GX attack, Algorithm GX. Single colorless energy. Search your deck for up to five cards and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck. Uh, you can only use one GX attack per game. Um, I don't use Algorithm GX super often, but I do use it some. Uh, it allows you to set up more Metagross, stuff like that. Occasionally you get in, but I mean, I play Sylveon all the time, and this is basically the same thing. You're going to get in. It's still, it's still worth it. So we are playing good old Metagross GX. I'm running a four, uh, four Beldum, I think three Metang. Yeah, four Metagross list. I'm running three Matang. That could probably be two because we are playing Rare Candy. Um, but I like the consistency out of it. 
Uh, one Shaman for setup. One Tapu Lele to uh, go digging for a supporter. One Magierna as sort of an A, um, ma mainly for Mystic Heart. Prevent all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage. Done each of your Pokemon that has a Metal Energy attached to it, which is super nice. Prevents Confusion, Poison, Paralysis, Burn. Uh, things that attacks that discard energy, all sorts of stuff. It just completely blanks those. And Soul Blaster is not a terrible attack. Um, definitely not the preference to do though, because after the first time you use it, its base power drops to 60, and that keeps going. So if the next turn you do it, you do Soul Blaster for 60. The turn after that, it's still just going to be 60. Um, so probably not attacking with it super often. Uh, and then the only other we. Pokemon we play are two Alolan Vulpix, which may look a little weird, but Beacon, which is a free attack. There is no energy cost to it. That's the little gray circle thingy. Uh, search your deck for up to two Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So, even if we lead with this, go get two Beldum. If we already have some Beldum, get some Matang, etc. Et it's great. Alolan Vulpix is really good, and is seen playing a lot of non- water decks, uh, just because Beacon's very, very solid, plus he's adorable. Just, he's adorable. So, we're gonna use him. Uh, just straight up 10 metal energy. No anything else. You can run, uh, let me find it. You can run shield energy. I have tinkered with shield energy, but I just don't think it's worth it. Um, it reduces damage taken a little bit, but I just, I don't really see there being a point. Uh, trainer cards, three field blower, because we need stadium control in this deck, particularly um, in some cases things like, we, we want to be able to use Magiar and his ability, Tapu Lele's, um, Shamans, so we need to be able to get rid of Silent Labs, just stadiums, uh, extra item cards, anything just needs to go. So Field Blower. Uh, two Max Potion. Uh, 250 HP is a ton, and if we can keep having 250 HP constantly, that's pretty good. Three Rare Candy to go along with our uh, Metagross line. I think three is okay. Maybe it's supposed to be four. Uh, one Rescue Stretcher. Every once in a while you just need another Metagross back, another Beldum, whatever. Uh, or sometimes you just want to Shaman or Tapu Lele again. Four Ultra Ball because because uh, four VS Seeker for the same because reason that you you always play VS Seeker if you have them play them this card is ridiculous uh, support it back from your discard pile into your hand just yeah and then these are our supporters ah oh too long a line that's because I played different art Sycamore for some reason uh, one Bridget search your deck for one basic Pokemon EX or three basic Pokemon, put them under your bench. You're basically never going to search for one basic EX unless you're getting Magierna. Uh, this is basically just so you can drop three Beldum or two Beldum and an Alolan Vulpix or, or whatever. Straight away, great on turn one. Two Lysander, because you always need Lysander. Uh, three in, four Sycamore is our main draw support. Uh, one Kakui, a little bit of a draw support and some extra damage. One of our ways of boosting damage is Kakui, and uh, it is quite quite useful. Uh, one Pokemon Ranger, remove all effects of attacks on each player and his or her Pokemon. This basically allows us to repeatedly use, where is it? Ah, there we go, Giga Hammer, because you can't use it on your next turn. On your next turn, you just Pokemon Ranger. That removes that restriction. You can Giga Hammer again. And then, oh, one Olympia. Uh, switch your active Pokemon with one of your benched. If you do, heal 30 damage from the Pokemon you moved to your bench. Uh, another way to be able to keep attacking without having to switch out using retreat cost. Uh, and then we round out with three choice band, our other damage boosting item, and one float stone because we are playing Shaman. Or sometimes we just need more ways to retreat uh, Metagross. I'm really happy with the deck. I've had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, it does solid damage. It sets up fairly consistently, especially with uh, Alolan and Vulpix, as Ned Strider pointed out to me. Um, I like the deck a lot. So, uh, yeah. 
Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. We're going to get into our match, uh, first round match, uh, right now. Okay, uh, we're going to jump straight into our first match uh, against my first round opponent, uh, Sukio. I think is his name on Discord. Slightly different name uh, here in PTCGO. So we're going to run, run it back with Metagross. Um, I was excited going into this. There are not a whole lot of fire decks in the format, so not a whole lot of weakness for Metagross to deal with. Um, and it resists things like Garboder, stuff like that, so I thought that was pretty exciting. And then in deck preview, I saw that he had a water fire deck, and I'm immediately like, ah, oh, oh, crap. Okay, so probably, probably Volcanion. Uh, spoilers for about 30 seconds from now, maybe 10. Uh, I was definitely right. This is definitely a Volcanion deck, so not what I wanted to see, but uh, I actually get to start Tapu Lele here, which, you know, you can just kind of drop energy on and, uh, you know, do damage equal to the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. Volcanion attaches a lot of energy. I can attach a lot of my metal energy to Tapu Lele without taking any, uh, any damage from from weakness like Metagross would. Um, ooh, here is where I fumble through trying to figure out how to respond to his good luck. I was having issues with how PTCGO works. Um, but yeah, he starts Baby Volcanion and uh, has one Volcanion on the bench. So pretty easy setup opportunity for him. Uh, not the best start I could hope for, but this is one of the few times I actually really don't mind leading Tapu Lele. Uh, he plays down the stadium that allows him to discard energy to draw cards. Uh, I believe he does use it a couple of times. Uh, and now he's just going to Alter Ball, go find Turtonator. Uh, a, a very recent addition to this deck from Guardians Rising that, uh, that gives it a lot more energy acceleration. And okay, so taking a look at Tapu Lele, uh, taking a look at that attack, seeing what I can figure out. Now we draw an Alolan Vulpix, which I was excited about. Um, at some point, if I do switch out, we can go dig for some more Pokemon. I ended up discarding everything. Metagross doesn't mind discarding energy because it can get them back uh, with its ability. And it got me to Beldum and a Metagross, so I was pretty happy with that. Um, we don't, if you saw Tapu Lele, you saw Tapu Cure. Uh, we don't really take advantage of it because we don't play any Psychic Energy. I know some versions of Metagross do. I prefer not to, um, since I'm not going to use it that often. Uh, so he ends us... Uh, which is not terrible. Actually gets us another Vulpix and an auto, uh, Ultra Ball. And several Metal Energy. Um, so we're, we're still in a decent position here. He does have two full Volcanion and a baby Volcanion and the Turtonator. So this is sort of exactly the setup that uh, the Volcanion deck is hoping for. Uh, use baby Volcanion to attach discarded energy from steaming up or from... Ultra Balls or Sycamores or whatever to power up your Volcanions and your Terminators on the bench to deal massive amounts of damage when you get them into the active. Um, so you'll see me repeatedly keep going back and looking at Tapu Lele. I haven't played with the card a ton. Uh, this is the first deck I've really messed around having it in. Um, so just kind of familiarizing myself with uh, its one attack. And uh, he's going to steam up a couple times. Power Heater for 80 damage and attach 2 energy from his discard um, to the Volcanion and the Turtonator. And here we draw an Olympia, which is not, you know, necessarily something I was looking for. Um, so we're going to pitch the Vulpix and the VS Seeker to... And I, I think this is the point where I kind of debate getting Beldum or Matang or Metagross. Um, end up settling on Shaman so that I can set up for three. Um, just try and get some more cards going and see what we can make happen. And uh, this is not the best place to find a Bridget um, since we do already have a pretty full bench of basics. I uh, did get a Float Stone, put that on the Shaman, uh, and was able to Field Blower away his Stadium, which is nice. Um, and I believe I'm just going to... Okay, Via Seeker, back the Sycamore, 
and I actually Olympia out. Um, oh no, actually, that's just straight up Sycamore. Okay. So just keep drawing cards, keep digging. Uh, find a choice band, which is great because uh, 150 from Metagross is not enough to talk, knock out Volcanion EX or Turtonator GX. Um, and then uh, use Tapu Lele to attack, and we move back to his turn. Uh, so now I have two Metagross in hand, which is awesome. Unfortunately, I don't have any Rare Candy or any Matang, uh, but I do have more energy, another Field Blower, another VS Seeker. So I do have some things to work with. Um, he is going to Sycamore again, uh, get some more fresh cards, look for some more energy uh, to discard to steam up to immediately bring back to power through Power Heater. Volcanion is a crazy consistent deck. Lots of ways to pitch energy, lots of ways to bring energy back. Boosting from pitching and discarding the energy, draw from discarding the energy. It's a super consistent, very good deck, and, and frankly I'm a little surprised I don't see it more often than I do. Um, it doesn't come up on the versus ladder super often, uh, but you do see it every once in a while, and uh, it it's just a really good deck. Um, that's really all there is to it. So he he drops a float stone. Uh, they do play several float to kind of cycle their volcano EXs in and out of the active when they do choose to use them. So now I'm seeing behind a Tapu Lele that has a ton of damage on it. Um, and so I, uh, I end up field blowing away both of the tools he has on his bench. I think it was a um, Fighting Fury Belt and a Float Stone. Uh, and I go ahead and attach to... Actually, yeah. I end up, I think I end up attaching to Tapu Lele in the long run, and I'm not 100% certain why I did that. I think I was trying to build up to eventually try and have Lele in at the same time as um, Turtonator. So, deal a lot of damage there. And I considered um, retreating, and then I remember that I had the Olympia and the VS Seeker, which would allow me to actually get some of the damage off of Lele and get Alolan Vulpix into the active so we can go digging uh, using Beacon for a couple of Matang to next turn um, see if we can finally start getting some Metagross you know, headed in the direction of setting up. We haven't seen any rare candy, but we do have two of our Metagross. So getting the Matangs for the two Beldum we have is uh, definitely a kind of a start I'd like to get on. Um, he hits a little bit of a slow patch on this turn, isn't able to do a, just a ton, ends up just power heatering, doesn't even steam up, uh, which is going to give us another turn to dig with Vulpix should we want to, which is awesome. Uh, we find another Beldum, uh, go ahead and start evolving the already benched Beldums into... Matangs, drop an energy, and just go ahead and beacon again. Uh, and I think, yeah, all I get is the Metagross. Um, maybe we draw a rare candy or a way to get another Matang. Uh, and we just pass on back and see what Volcanion has for us. This is obviously by no means a favorable matchup for us. It is probably actively the deck's worst matchup. Um, I can't think of many others that are, are super, super bad like this. Maybe Tapu Koko, just because it sets up very quickly and it does resist, uh, or at least some of the electric Pokemon in the deck do resist, uh, Metagross's metal attacks. Uh, so he goes Professor Letter. He's, he is running so many ways to find energy, so many ways to get energy back. Volcanion is just a crazy, crazy consistent deck. And, uh, wasn't my favorite thing to see. I'm just hoping, you know, the other rounds of the tournament, this is not something we keep running into. Uh, because it's definitely not the matchup I prefer to see. Um, so he is actually going to take the knockout on the Alolan Vulpix. And we will promote another attacker. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and start messing around with Metagross since I do have several in my hand. Uh, and some Matangs are already ready to start powering them up. And I think we have one more Matang in the discard we pitched earlier. But we were able to Geotech Systems, which is Metagross's ability that allows you to uh, attach a, a Psychic or Metal Energy from your discard to your active. Uh, which is great. Like, even just having 
one energy in hand and two Metagross on the field with two energy in your discard, you now have a fully powered Metagross. It's a great ability. I think it's. I think originally when um, Guardians Rising came out and we got Metagross, it was sort of. I don't think I think people I think it was underestimated. I think Metagross in general was underestimated. For a while, it was only being played alongside. Um, uh, what's the lion's name? Sol Solgaleo. Uh, Solgaleo GX with Metagross GX. I actually played that deck for a little while. It's a lot of fun, but it is very, very slow because you're trying to set up multiple stage twos. Uh, so here, we actually use uh, the GX attack algorithm uh, to go digging for some cards. I believe we get... Okay, uh, we get a Beldum, a Choice Band. I believe it's a Leaf Blower, a Max Potion, and uh, a Rare Candy, I think is what I ended up going and getting. So uh, hopefully be able to get us down another Metagross next turn, uh, heal some damage off should Volcanion not knock us out, stuff like that, start powering up, try and uh, get some knockouts. He does in us. Um, it is back to six, so it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, at least, you know, he didn't end us down to two or something, you know, much later in the game. And we actually do end up getting the Beldum and the Metagross back and the Muscle Band, or the, the Choice Band back, so I was... It wasn't the worst end in the world. I was actually pretty okay with it. Uh, he does switch into one of his fully powered Volcanion EXs. Hits us with the Volcanic Eat. Heat. Volcanic Eat. Don't do not do that, kids. Volcanoes are not good for you. Uh, vol that was terrible. I apologize for that. That was... No. It was like... It was a terrible dad joke. Um, he does hit us for weakness. Knocks out Metagross. Uh, I actually go back into Tapu Lele because I do have the Lysander in my hand. Um, and we're going to try and uh, see if we can't knock out Turtonator. I do realize here that I am actually a little short of the amount of damage uh, to actually just straight up knock it out because there's only, I believe it's 7 energy between us. And uh, even if I Geotech Systems, which I'm going to, um, that's going to be 8 energy. So 160 plus the choice band, 190, 190, allowing me to energy drive uh, for the knockout of the Turtonator, which was his um, most powered up in terms of amount of fire energy on it, Mons. Uh, we do take two prizes, get another uh, choice band, and an energy. Now, we are just going to get immediately knocked back out by one of his uh, Volcanions or, or his other Turtonator on his bench. Uh, but we were at least able to take a couple of prizes there, uh, start digging, hopefully be able to keep setting up Metagross without just being totally laid out. He does play the my favorite Volcanion uh, EX, which is the Secret Rare that has, I believe it's Xerneas in the background. The art on that card is just fantastic. I think I've said that in like three different videos or something, which is probably a little bit ridiculous, but I just, I really do love the art on the Secret Rare version of that. Uh, so he does... Uh, revenge kill us with Volcanion. Uh, so I go into one of our Metagross, and uh, we're going to see if we can't power up and take some knockouts. The problem here is now I am down to just one Metagross. We can only Geotech Systems once a turn. Uh, so I'm just immediately going to power up Giga Hammer for the knockout um, because Volcanion does have only 180 HP. And uh, we do 150 plus the choice band. I didn't really have anything else I could do there, but he can immediately just go into Turtonator uh, and use his three energy attack to uh, Bright Flame, that's it, to deal 320 and knock us out, take his final prize, and he takes game one. Um, that's not super surprising. I mean, I think I've said this a couple of times. Volcanion's not a good matchup for us in any way, shape, or form. So uh, we're just going to immediately jump back in. Uh, there is the deck you play in your first round. You are on for the entire tournament. You can't switch. You can't make any changes. You have to submit deck lists uh, by the end of week one, uh, which I've I submitted my deck list uh, right after this match. So we're going to go back in. Uh, hope we can take a pick up game two. Maybe take it to maybe take it to game three and uh, make a little comeback from little comeback victory uh, against our weakness. So. Um, yeah, we're going to jump right on into game two. There's really nothing to change, really nothing to, mess, nothing to mess around with. So we're just going to immediately get back into it. Um, 
this game, I like this opening hand. We obviously are, you know, have no choice but to keep it because we do have the Beldum. But we have the Bridget, which is going to allow us to go get three more Beldum if we have them. A couple of Beldum and a little and Vulpix, whatever it is we want to go dig for. Um, so turn one Bridget is fantastic for this deck. The ability to just very, very quickly start setting up multiple Metagross or to go get the lone Vulpix along with a couple of Beldum uh, is fantastic. And in a pinch, go get the Magierna. Um, if we are just super worried uh, about statuses or something. Now we do, uh, off of him having to mulligan, actually draw into the Vulpix. So I just immediately bridge it, drop three Beldum, drop an energy, and... Uh, I consider Ultra Balling, uh, but I believe I just, yeah, I just end up passing. I don't really want to discard the VS Seeker or one of the Metagross or, you know, the Inn or whatever to go get uh, a Matang or really no reason to go get Shaman right now. Uh, too many cards left in hand to, for setup to really be worth it. Uh, he does have to lead Turtonator with the Volcanion on the bench, uh, and he does end us. That's not exactly how they want to start. Um, Turtonator is a preferable lead for them over Volcanion EX, but I think they really want to be able to start Baby Volcanion uh, just to immediately start setting up off of Energy Discard. I think Turtonator is probably the second best choice as your lead. Um, not that you always have a choice, but I think it's probably your second best option uh, for its first attack. I do not remember the name offhand, uh, but it's two colorless energy, deals 20 damage, and uh, if Turtonator, prior to its next turn, takes any damage, it puts eight damage counters on the Pokemon that attacked it. So that just, it's ridiculous. Um, so we do end up with a Rare Candy off of uh, him inning us, which allows us to immediately get a Metagross going. Uh, and at that point, I do Ultra Ball, go get a Shaman. I am down to two cards in hand plus the Shaman, so I can now set up for four way better than saying up for two or three uh totally okay with this we do have the olympia and the max potion which i don't love having both of in my hand but it's workable um we are going to attach the metal energy to metagross we now have two on it uh and if we can go get another metagross we have another rare candy to attach and actually uh ultra balling away two cards getting the metagross um would put it down to just a free Sycamore. I actually end up Geotech system, Systems, the one energy, back onto the Beldum because Turnator has 190 HP. So even with a Choice Band, um, Metagross only does 180, can't straight up knock Turnator out. So I wanted to immediately put at least a little damage on Turnator. Um, and we can get energy back pretty easily with Geotech Systems. So I don't m mind that discard of energy. Uh, off of Beldum's attack. It only does 20, but that's all we need to be able to knock it out with the Choice Band. The problem is he has a Fighting Fury Belt, which takes him from 190 to 230 HP, uh, which is well outside the range. Uh, he does immediately knock us out for weakness with, I believe it's called Razor Trap or Shell Trap or something. Uh, unfortunately, post-commentating, I'm not actually going to be able to see the name of those unless I uh, happen to take a look at Turtonator. Uh, here I'm debating what I want to pull in. I'm actually just going to go ahead and straight up into the Metagross. I'm not 100% convinced that was right um, because I can't knock him out from where he's at. Uh, I do end up Ultra Balling. Uh, I'm assuming to... Okay, we're actually going to pitch the Max Potion and the Olympia, go get a Metagross... Go ahead and rare candy uh, one of our Beldum with the Metagross and just kind of go from there. Um, and then actually I end up sycamoring away the end. Seven fresh cards. Do find the choice band. I actually, I was going to drop it on the active. I decide not to. And I decide not to put that energy on the active because we do have one in the discard. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and start setting up uh, the benched. Metagross, and uh, try and get a third going using the Beldum I had on the bench and the Matang in my hand. Um, I know with the Fighting Fury Belt, I can't knock him out. So what I am going to do, uh, attach an energy using Geotech Systems because I'll just be able to get those back next turn uh, if I do get knocked out. 
drop the choice ban on the benched one since it's not going to make much difference on the active and it's just going to get knocked down in return. Briefly consider Algorithm GX in there. Uh, maybe if I hadn't attached the third energy, I'd have considered doing that, but it probably wasn't worth it. Went ahead and dropped a ton of damage on Turtonator. Takes him to 170 out of his original 190, but actually 230 with the Fighting Fury belt. Uh, it does put eight damage counters on Metagross, but since we are playing against weakness, that's not super relevant. I'm not super worried about that. Uh, so he does finally find a baby Volcanion. This is actually a super slow start for, you know, a Volcanion deck in general. To to be this far into a game, only having two Pokemon out, not having found a baby Volcanion, there's not a ton of energy on everything. Um, this is actually a super slow start and a great opening for us to kind of take advantage. Uh, he does Bright Flame for all sorts of damage for the knockout. It does discard two of his energy. Um... And now we're going to see if we can't uh, revenge knock this one out. Uh, so drop the choice bend on the Matang on the bench. Now the th problem here is I need to find um, a third energy. Or I need, I need to be able to draw an energy. Or I need to be able to find one off of another Metagross. Uh, and I actually have the opportunity to do both, because we do draw the energy, and we do have the Ultra Ball to go get the Metagross. Uh, and we do have Leaf Blower. Um, so I'm debating between the Float Stone, the Fighting Fury Belt, and the Stadium. I end up going with the Float Stone and the Stadium, because I do intend on talking, knocking out Turtonator here. So it doesn't really matter if he has the Fighting Fury Belt. We're going to do 150 either way. Uh, go get another Metagross. Drop it. Uh, what I actually probably should have done is Geo uh, Geotech Systems with the new Metagross to get the third energy onto the active and place the one in my hand onto the one on the bench. I know that seems like a small distinction, but eventually we're going to lose an active Metagross, and you want to already have energy on your benched ones just in case. Uh, now, he does have no energy on any of the, on either of his Volcanion, uh, Baby or EX, uh, though he may hit off Max Elixir here. And so now it's kind of a... Uh, I can't use Giga Hammer with the active Metagross, so we will have to switch out. Um, but we can one-shot Baby Volcanion. It can't knock us out this turn. He would have to go through a crazy number of cards to power up uh, a Volcanion EX to knock us out that turn. Uh, so we do have an energy to place on the bench Volcanion, and then I go ahead and retreat out. Three retreat cost is usually very heavy and very difficult for Pokemon, uh, but with Geotech Systems and two Metagross, you can basically just repower up, and it really isn't that big a deal. You're just almost immediately getting that energy back, which is fantastic. Um, I think I'm probably not going to play the Magyarn here. It doesn't, it's not super relevant against Volcanion. It's not protecting us from much that they play. They're not playing, you know, Team Flare Grunts or Hammers or anything. Uh, so we do ahead and go ahead and knock out Baby Volcanion. So now all he's left with is a regular Volcanion with only one energy on it. Um, and that's not, not a bad position for us at all, particularly you know, considering the matchup. And uh, he ends up having to just immediately pass back. Now, the issue I'm in uh, is I don't have an energy in my hand. So I can uh, Geotech Systems twice, get two energy on the active, but that is not enough uh, for the Giga Hammer attack. You do have to have three. So in theory, if I can dig through the deck enough, uh, go find another energy... Uh, power it out of my hand onto the Metagross. I can actually just straight up win here. So I go ahead and Sycamore, pitch everything. No energy. Field Blower, which doesn't do anything. Uh, so I actually end up just Algorithm GXing there. Uh, not what I wanted to do, because I don't want to give Volcanion more turns. Uh, but we do go get a Rescue Stretcher, a Kakui, a Float Stone, and two energy. And uh, I don't remember exactly why in that moment I got the Kakui. It may have been in the back of my head. 
uh, the extra 20 damage is relevant against some things in his deck, namely Turtonator, uh, which surpasses the amount of damage we can do with just a Choice Band. He is able to Sycamore, get several more benched Pokemon, uh, and since I need to take three more prizes, it doesn't look great for me. He also finds the Field Blower, uh, gets rid of both of the Choice Bands we have in play, now, we play three choice bands in the deck, but at that point, I wasn't exactly sure what my last three prize cards were. Um, and there's only a handful of cards left in my deck. So there's another choice band somewhere, but at that point, I kind of thought I had at least two, maybe three energy in, in my prizes. So the choice band was still in the deck, but it could have been two energy and the choice band. I, I wasn't actually sure. I hadn't looked closely enough when I had Ultra Balled earlier. Anytime in a game you guys have the chance to look through your deck, be that Ultra Ball, Level Ball, anything that searches, take a second, flip through all of your deck. Don't just go find what you're looking for. Figure out what all you have and what you're missing. Try and figure out what your prize cards are because it, it gives you an advantage when you're making your plays. Uh, so I go ahead and rescue Stretcher, get a Beldum. Uh, just try and keep actively setting up. I've got a ton of cards in my hand, a ton of options, enough energy on Metagross, uh, and I'm just kind of trying to figure out how to proceed because I'm very, very close. Um, I try and Sycamore up his Volcanion, which I have no idea why I dragged Sycamore up there. I was trying to Lysander. I was trying to drag up the one with no energy on it, make it more difficult for him to either retreat it or set it up. Uh, so I go ahead and Giga Hammer that one and hold entirely too long on that energy, basically completely blanking out the screen there. Uh, he does draw his Stadium. Uh, it is somewhat difficult for him to get Pokemon out of the active. He does play, I assume, usually Volcanion plays several Floatstone, a couple of Switch, uh, and I think we actually saw an Olympia from him earlier in the, uh, in the match. Oh, no, okay, we actually see the Olympia from him right here. So that, not, that brings that back, heals it off 30 damage, and allows him to start powering up a Turtonator with Shell Trap. Um, so again, anytime I hit that thing after it Shell Traps, I'm going to end up with 8 damage counters, which is not my preference by any stretch of the imagination. The other problem here is the active uh, Metagross can't attack, but now uh, with the Rare Candy and the Metagross in my hand, I can actively power up without any energy in hand, because I'll be able to... Uh, Geotech systems three times in the turn, which is awesome. So here I'm going to Via Seeker, and uh, I considered Olympia to just go ahead and switch out cleanly. Um, but I think in the long run, the better option, which is what I, I ended up going for, is Lysandering um, to go ahead and, I believe, pull up the... Uh, the already damaged Volcanion, because I can just retreat out. This is the great thing about Geotech systems. I can retreat out, drop all three energy, and immediately put a bunch of it back using Geotech systems. My new Metagross is already fully powered back up. I didn't have to use the Olympia. I can actually take the opportunity to use the Lysander. Uh, yeah, pull up the beautiful, beautiful Secret Rare, and just go ahead and Giga Hammer knock it out, and we are in a, a pretty decent spot. I only have to take one more prize. Uh, he has to take three. Now, he can very easily, you know, with one more energy on the Turtonator, go ahead and take two more prizes real quick just by knocking out one of my Metagross. I mean, that is definitely something I have to be careful about, and he does find that third energy. Um, and so, you know, this isn't the best spot in the world. So this, this next section got really interesting. Uh, it, it's going to take me a minute or two because I ended up having to do a decent amount of math. Because So Metagross, um, its uh, Giga Hammer attack does 150. Now, Turtonator has 190 HP. So even with a Choice Band, that only puts me at 180. That doesn't give me the knockout. So I do have... Um, the Kukui in hand, 
Um, and so you see, I'm here, I'm looking to figure out how many choice bands I have left, where they are, because I play three choice bands in the deck. Um, there are only four cards left in my deck, and I have one prize card that I couldn't, I hadn't checked my numbers correctly. I kind of thought it was energy. I kind of thought it might be the other choice band. Uh, it had been a while since I had searched through the deck, and I hadn't, I wasn't actually sure. So in theory, if I could cooey hit the choice band off of one of those two cards, so 50-50 shot, assuming it's not in the prizes, I can just win here. So I just, I kind of have to go for it. I do hit the choice band, it wasn't prized, and that allows me to Giga Hammer for 200 damage, knock out the Turtonator, and actually take a game off of Volcanion, which I was thrilled about. Um, this is, you know, I've said it probably five or six times in this video already, this is a terrible matchup. But the the option of actually being able to to pick up a game off of it, you know, at this point, I don't even care if I don't win the match. I picked up a game off of what is probably the worst thing for me to face, and uh, that's fantastic. So we're going to pick up, go to game three, uh, just basically immediately try and finish out uh, this battle versus uh, Sukio round one Puckle Podcast standard tournament. Uh, I was actually pretty excited at that point. I'm now 1-1 against Volcanion. I have the opportunity to win game three. We have some options here. So immediately I get a little concerned because all I have in my opening hand is a single Beldum. Um, so he does have to mulligan. And so, you know, this gives me an opportunity to pick up another Pokemon on the draw. I've got some options here. This hand, if you look at it, it's not terrible. It's not great. I have an Energy. I have a Matang. I have a Choice Band. Rare Candy. But Rescue Stretcher does nothing, and VS Seeker also does nothing. Um, I pick up another VS Seeker, another Muscle Band. He has Volcanion. He has Baby Volcanion. I'm in bad shape. So basically, he you know he can't attack on his first turn. That gives me my first turn to find something, find any other Pokemon. I'm willing to sycamore away every bit of this if I have to, if it gets me something that makes the game keep going. Um, so he he actually ends up with three Volcanion on his bench, turn one. So if he actually could attack here, uh, which would have been terrible for me, that would have just been it. This is also just it. So I go ahead and equip, go ahead and put the Muscle Band on it. Um, but there is nothing I can do. I only have the one Pokemon. All he has to do is steam up basically just once. And that's going to be the game, which is, you know, super unfortunate. But, hey, that's how Pokemon go sometimes. Sometimes you only get one basic, and that's all you see in your Pokemon knocks you out turn two. Um, I'm still actually really happy with this match. I got a game off of it. Uh, this is the first tournament that other uh, just kind of on the events page on TCGO that I've ever played. Uh, that was great. I was thrilled. Um, disappointed I didn't win, but, hey, you know. You're not going to win all of them, and I think it still went pretty well. I think, for the most part, I played okay. A couple of misplays here and there, but um, I found the lines, got a little lucky slash blessed at the end of game two there to uh, to hit the choice band off of the Kikui and be able to take that knockout. So good games to my opponent. Uh, wish him the best of luck round two. Uh, I should be recording round two. You know, I, I actually have no idea when I'll be recording round two. I haven't even gotten to talk to my opponent yet, find out when we can make it happen. But uh, I, I think Metagross is a good option. Um, it just was not the right option in that first round. But that's the luck of the draw. You're going to end up with bad matchups sometimes. That's not that big a deal. Um, yeah, so we're going to end out. We're going to open up a pack real quick, close out this video, a little uh, Guardians Rising action see what we get out of this one and then uh, I think that'll be all for us we appreciate you guys watching tune in for more Magic the Gathering and Pokemon TCG content here on Delinquent Velociraptor Media make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and we will see you guys soon make sure you guys stay safe and have a blessed day